What's up guys? So not that long ago, probably a couple of months ago, a pre-built gaming desktop right around that thousand dollar price point was definitely underperforming for the money. And you were mainly getting like an i5 or a Ryzen 5 with a GTX 1660, maybe a 1660 Super for like a thousand to eleven hundred dollars. But over the last couple months, prices have come down and there's some really, really good deals going into the holiday season. So in this video, I'm gonna go through my top three picks for pre-built gaming desktops right around that $1,000 budget that you can either buy for yourself or pick up as a gift for somebody else heading into the holidays. And these things are amazing deals, but the prices might come down even further as we get closer to the holidays, get closer to Black Friday. So definitely stay tuned along the way over the next month or so as things shift around. But let's jump in to the, to the PCs and we'll get started with the CyberPower PC Gamer Extreme. And this PC is one that I just recently found on Amazon. This is definitely the best PC for the money on Amazon right now. Whether you're going up in price, down in price, this is the one I would go with if you were looking to purchase a PC off of Amazon. And just starting off with the big specs, we have an i5-11400F. So no integrated graphics on the CPU, but a six core, 12 thread CPU. That should be handle most games without really any problems. Some decent amount of multitasking. It's not an eight core, but it's still very, very powerful uh, at the six core 12 thread point. We also get eight gigs of DDR4. Sadly, it is single channel, so you're only gonna get one single stick of eight gigabytes. But you can always upgrade that down the line, pick up a second stick of eight gigs, probably cost you right around, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks in order to upgrade this thing to 16 gigabytes of dual channel, which will far and away exceed the performance, probably give you five to 10% boost on that 11400F and a lot of different programs. And the really nice piece of this build is an RTX 2060. So pretty much this exact same PC, the Gamer Extreme VR Gaming was set up, I don't know, maybe like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, maybe even a month ago with an i5 10400F and a 1660 Super and it was costing, I believe $1,049, maybe $1,149. I'll have to go check one of my older videos. But the prices have come down on these things remarkably and we're getting better uh, performing hardware for the price. We also get a 500 gig NVMe SSD, so some really fast uh, hard drives in there, uh, Wi-Fi ready in Windows 11 Home. So you're already into the Windows 11 environment. Some of you might not like that, some of you might, but overall a really, really nice set of specs. And here we can see some of the comparable PCs. So like I mentioned, that i5 10400F with the 1660 Super build is 1167 right now on Amazon. Uh, not being sold by Amazon.com, but still pretty much the exact same PC, the same mouse, the same keyboard that comes with it for $150 more for worse hardware. So overall, this PC should be super, super quick. Be able to tackle pretty much any game out there, at least at 1080p, 1440p in a lot of different titles. And hopefully we will put that to the test. I'm thinking about purchasing one of these three PCs that I go over today for a giveaway on the channel, but also of course to review and give you guys some feedback on. And this one might just be that PC. So stay tuned for some future videos because we might just be doing a giveaway. But this PC, super, super awesome. If you have Amazon Prime, if you're looking to purchase a PC off of Amazon, this is 100% the one I would go with, but there are two more options that I wanna cover in this video. And the next one is on Newegg. So here we go. We have the ABS Master Gaming PC. You'll definitely recognize a lot of the specs between this PC and the CyberPower PC. So you get i5 11400F, RTX 2060, same exact comments I made on the CyberPower PC version, go for this one. But instead of eight gigabytes of single channel, we now get 16 gigs of dual channel, 3000 megahertz memory. And again, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. So again, super amazing speeds. The other thing is that on this um, build, they give you a lot more details on the specs. 
So you're going to get a 600 watt power supply, a gold power supply. You're going to get uh, a B560 motherboard. So not the best motherboard. It's the budget version of, you know, the Z series and all of that. But again, it's a, a really good motherboard for just an 11400F. No problem. No worries there. Has Wi-Fi, has Bluetooth, VR ready. All of that is there and listed, which is super awesome. Um, they give you a lot more details on some of the lesser important specs on some of these PCs. But overall, this PC looks the part. It looks really, really nice. Um, I would be maybe slightly concerned when it comes to airflow with this PC versus the cyber power. So you can see you only really have airflow on the sides of the front panel. And I also have no idea if there's more than the one fan that's in the back of the case. Um, but overall, it's pretty similar components. It's a, a micro ATX motherboard, just like the cyber power PC. The only thing I will say is that between the cyber power PC and this ABS master gaming is it looks like the graphics card that comes with the ABS is probably a little bit better. Again, they're both pretty much using stock uh, CPU coolers. As you can see, this looks like an aftermarket cooler on the ABS version, but it's still the low profile circular uh, design when it comes to the CPU cooler. Again, fine for an 11400F, but when you look at the 2060, the one that's in the cyber power looks like a single fan model versus the ABS that has a dual fan version of the card. So the RTX 2060 in the ABS is probably going to be a little bit better cooled. You might get a couple of percent, maybe, maybe even only like a percent better in terms of performance. The cooler it stays, of course, the higher clock speeds it can run at and all of that. So you might see slightly better performance on the ABS but it's also gonna cost you a little bit more. So this one is 1149 from Newegg versus the CyberPower PC being only $1,029. So of course there's a difference there in price uh, that you would definitely have to consider. Even though you might get a little bit better graphics card cooling on that ABS, the CyberPower PC comes in almost $130 cheaper and is still giving you really, really good components. Uh, you are missing one stick of memory in this. So if even if you were to upgrade that, still going to be cheaper to go with the CyberPower PC. You also get the three front fans that we know are there. We don't know for sure what's in, again, the ABS in the front. And we get the rear fan. So three fans, four fans overall in the system. Some really good cooling airflow on this case. So overall, I see the CyberPower PC being a better deal than the, the ABS from Newegg, but very comparable and very, very close. If you want to go with the ABS, you like the look of it, go for it. Uh, if you like the CyberPower PC look and you get the cheaper price, you can definitely go for that one on Amazon. But we do have one more desktop to look at, and that is one from HP. So we have our typical HP Pavilion. I've covered this thing in the past in some different specifications. We did a review on it with the RX 5500, um, but they have a lot of different specs out there now when it comes to the HP Pavilion gaming desktop. There's also some different versions of the Omen, but they're gonna be more expensive. The only thing with this HP uh, Pavilion Gaming Desktop, once we get into the specs, before we even get into those, uh, the cooling on this thing, not gonna be great. You have like one fan in there and then a super small cooler on the CPU. No front fans, nothing like that. Pretty enclosed for a case, so things will get hot, but they should still run really, really well. I wouldn't be too concerned about it, especially with this level of hardware. But that's something to take into consideration if you're looking to go with the HP versus one of the other two options. But jumping into the specs, comes with Windows 11 Home, an i5-11400. So this one does have integrated graphics. If we leave it at 8 gigabytes, it's still dual channel from HP, which it wasn't from CyberPower. So you get 8 gigs of 2x4, or you can upgrade for 100 bucks to 16 gigs at 2x8. But where we're going to upgrade and where we're going to spend the money is on the graphics card and we're going to upgrade that to an RTX 3060 from a 1650 Super which brings us up to $1049 and then we of course have to upgrade the power supply to 500 watts in order to support that new graphics card so $1080 we get an i5-11400 an RTX 2060 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage so overall from a price to performance standpoint this HP is definitely going to be your best bet. RTX 3060, same CPU, same pretty much everything else. Slightly less storage, uh, 8 gigs of RAM. So overall, I mean, this is definitely going to be the best performing of the bunch. 
Yet again, it's going to be the worst cooled out of all three of them. So you're going to have some trade-offs when it comes to performance, uh, when it comes to cooling versus just pure hardware output from the RTX 3060. And a 3060 to a 2060 isn't that crazy of a jump. 2060 Super, pretty much the same, probably outperforms the 3060 a little bit. So a 2060 to a 3060, maybe 10% difference. So overall, you're still going to be able to play all the same games on a 2060 that you would on a 3060, maybe at like five less FPS, depending on the game, like five to 10 FPS difference, uh, except for like the crazy titles where you might be getting 300 FPS on a 3060, you're getting like 250 FPS. In the long run, not that big of a deal, 2060 versus 3060. Um, and with this PC, you're also very limited when it comes to upgradability down the line. Everything is super compact in the HP Pavilion, all pretty much manufactured for HP. Uh, nothing is going to be off the shelf that you could just buy and replace. The only thing is really going to be your CPU and your graphics card if you want to pop one out and pop a new one in. But again, you're limited when it comes to the power supply. You can't exceed the 500 watts of the HP Pavilion. So you really can't go with a higher end graphics card in this build where you can upgrade the cyber power PC and the ABS a little bit more just because you know they're they're more off the shelf components. You can replace the power supply, replace a cooler, replace your graphics card, whatever it is, you could definitely do that in either the cyber power PC or the ABS Master Gaming. So although the specs on the HP are super compelling, the upgradability down the line, the cooling, definitely limit it. So I would probably, you know, if you really just want pure specs, pure performance, go with the HP. But if you're looking at the overall package, the lifetime of the PC, I would definitely go with either the ABS and the CyberPower. And from there, I would narrowly go with the CyberPower PC. So this is probably the PC I would go with. My number one pick moving forward, going into the holidays, is the CyberPower PC with the i5-11400F and RTX 2060 for just over $1,000. Super awesome deal. You can do whatever you want with it down the line. Throw in a new power supply, throw in a new graphics card, new CPU, new RAM, whatever you want. You can do it with this build. But as it stands, as it sits, and it's an awesome build, and should be able to play whatever games you want. And like I said, stay tuned for some future reviews of one of these PCs. I'm not going to give any hints. Uh, and potentially a giveaway for the viewers and subscribers of this channel. So stay tuned for that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel. Turn on post notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next one.